Welcome back. Today I'm going to do a complete test and review of this new Wokatel P1201 portable power station. When I test devices like this, I like to look at five categories. The first category is battery capacity. And I'm going to start that test as I go through and tell you about the rest of the tests that I'll do today. I do have my My Heat heater hooked up. The My Heat heater, when it's in its steady state mode, will pull just under 200 watts. I selected this load for this device, which is about 0.2C, or about 20% of the overall battery capacity of the device. I wanna know how much battery capacity I can actually get versus what the stated capacity is. The second category I like to test is recharge time. If I only have a limited amount of time with grid power, how long would it take to recharge the device from 0% to 100% capacity? The third category is the AC inverter's maximum output level. So how much power can you actually pull from it in high demand scenarios such as power tools, coffee makers, or hot plates? They claim that it can sustain up to 1200 watts of power output, and I wanna know if it can do that over the entire duration of the battery's remaining capacity. The fourth category is display features, and finally I wanna know what the overall value of the device is. Is it worth what you pay for it? The My Heat heater has hit 194 watts, so let's unplug it and reset the watt meter. I'm gonna reset it at the same time that I pull out the recharge cable. So off the bat, I did notice something with this battery capacity test. I'm getting a reading of 191 watts. On the display of this Aburl P1201, I'm getting 181 watts. So there is about a 5% discrepancy there. And I honestly don't know which one of these is more accurate. However, I do use this meter for all of my testing. So for me, this is my baseline. Any of the numbers I come up with during any of my testing, I usually use this meter to get them. So for today's test, I'll go with whatever I get off of this meter. As the battery capacity test runs, I'll talk about some of the features of the device. The DC panel has a 10 amp, 12 volt, 120 watt car style outlet. This will run something like a mini fridge or even possibly a CPAP machine. In addition to that, there are two of these 5521 3 amp outlets. So 12 volts, 3 amps, or 36 watts. You can turn on this panel using this button right here. You do get that beep feedback for all of the buttons on this device. Moving over to the USB panel, there are your traditional USB-A outlets, two of those rated at 12 watts each or 5 volts, 2.4 amps. There is an impressive four USB-C outports on this device with one being 100 watts and the other three 20 watts a piece. So you can put power in and out of the device using these power delivery USB-C ports. It also has a button just like the DC outlet and it has the same beep when it turns on and turns off. Recently, I've been seeing new devices that come without a flashlight. However, this Wokatel Aburl does have a flashlight on it. It is one of those single LED lights and you can turn it on by just pressing the button. It has multiple modes, SOS and simple flash mode. No matter which mode you are in, if you hold the power button, it'll shut off the light. So I don't have to cycle through all the lights to get to the off position. I do feel like the beeping here is a little loud, particularly if I'm gonna be at a campsite and I might be camping close to other campers and they hear me going through hitting all these buttons as I turn things on and off. The AC inverter is rated for 1200 watts continuously and accepts surges up to 2400 watts for a very short period of time. I'm currently going through the battery capacity test and under this door, you'll see that there are four outlets and you you might think to yourself that these outlets are upside down. Newer trends in construction design do have this ground cable on the top of the outlet and that's to prevent a fire or sparking if something falls. So in this case it does have this cover protecting it from anything falling on it but on a wall for example in a home the first thing that comes into contact with anything that falls is that ground cable which is not a hot cable as opposed to flipping this over having the hot and the neutral cable coming into contact with that object first, possibly causing a spark. I will test the inverter's overall output capability after I complete this battery capacity test which looks like it has about two hours remaining. This display is bright enough when it's on that I can see it in this dark room but 
when the display dims down naturally, it's a little hard to read even in this room. It is a monochrome display except for when you're supercharging it and a little red light will indicate right here that you're in supercharge mode. As you turn on the DC mode, you'll get a small smoking symbol and a 5521 barrel replica. When you turn on the USB panel, you will get a small USB-A icon. When the light is on, I'm not gonna cycle it right now, a small light bulb appears, and currently you see the pure sine wave symbol indicating that the AC inverter is on and it is running its test. The battery percentage is okay. I do like that there are 10 bars that you can see from a distance to get an idea of what your battery state is without having to come close by. The internal fan is running and the internal fan symbol is on right now. Because I have power coming out of via Burl, I do have about 70 minutes of discharge time remaining. However, if I had power going in, this could also indicate how much time I had left until achieving a full state of charge. The final note on the display is it does say 60 hertz. It comes in the USA standard at 60 hertz, but if you are in a region where you're running at 50 hertz, there is a process you can do found in the user manual to convert this over to 50 hertz. If the lights start blinking while you're using the P1201, that indicates that you have overloaded whatever outlet is blinking. The best way to resolve that is to turn it off and then turn it back on. The battery just ticked over 10% and as it hit the 10% mark, it gave me three long beeps letting me know that it's running low on power. It still has about 20 minutes remaining, but that beep in this case for me is a good feature because it's loud enough to give you a good audible signal that it's going to run out of power soon. The battery capacity test just completed with 735 watt hours and it ran for about three hours and 54 minutes. So 735 watt hours out of a 960 watt hour battery gives me an inverter efficiency of about 77%. Now this number takes into account inverter efficiency and some reserve that the battery has built in. For me, something in the 80 to 90% range is preferred, but I feel like that 5% difference could be within the margin of error induced by my meter, which reads that it's pulling about 5% more power than the display here does. Now I'm gonna see how long it takes to recharge from 0%. This test is gonna be where the Aburl makes its money. Wolcatel claims that this thing will charge in a lightning fast 1.5 hours. So I wanna see how long it takes to get to 50%, 80%, and then finally 100% so I know if I am in a power down situation how long it would take to recharge the device. So I'm going to plug it in and hit start. It immediately jumped up to about 700 watts of power going in and it says we have about 90 minutes of charge time remaining. I'll compare that to this timer at the end of the test. Inside of the box, you get an owner's manual. It's got some pretty basic information in it. You get a car charging cable. So this will accept up to 24 volts and 10 amps. So you can possibly get around 240 watts out of this in a 24 volt system. Then the cable that we're currently using is the AC wall outlet charger. This plugs right into the device and you can get up to 700 watts into the device using this cable. The last cable is the MC4 to XT60 cable. This cable can be used to pull in about 500 watts of solar power. If you are in a temporary grid down situation, you can use this to recharge the device in around two hours. Let's go check and see how long it took to recharge the device. Not bad with that charging. It hit 50% in 40 minutes. It hit 80% in an hour and five minutes, and it completed its charge in one hour and 23 minutes. Now we're gonna do the maximum AC output test. This test will tell me how much power I can pull out of this thing in high intensity situations. To do this test, I have my heat gun, egg cooker, and my water kettle. I'm gonna start by turning the device on turning on the AC outlet. And my question is, can I make breakfast with this device? So with the water kettle and the egg cooker, can I run both of these devices at the same time if I wanted to have eggs and omelet and coffee together or tea? The water kettle is heating up and the egg cooker is heating up. This thing usually pulls around eight or 900 watts. This thing usually pulls around 300 watts. They're both working together and we're getting 
1100 watts right now. The display is a little hard to read, but I do have the sun pretty much at the worst possible angle, mainly for the lighting of the shot. I feel like I could cook my breakfast if I wanted to using this thing. So for me, that's a win for this AC inverter. Let me add the heat gun to see just how much I can push it. Move this over here so I don't steam myself in the face. All right, so I just hit 1200 watts. Let me bump it up and just see if it'll drop. The inverter never really went above 1200 watts. As I was increasing the load from the heat gun, it stayed pretty steady and I heard the heat gun bogging down. So I feel like the inverter is doing something to protect itself from overloading. To me, that's okay. Now what I wanna do for the rest of the battery's capacity is run this and see if it will run that 1200 watt load for the remaining battery capacity. The AC inverter just stopped running. It ran for the entire life of the battery. It looked like it was taking about 1180 watts. And you can hear that fan is going full speed and the vent is not very hot. So it did do what it is supposed to do, which is run that heat gun for the entire duration of the battery life. I'll put on the screen how long it lasted, but at 1200 watts, a 960 watt hour battery, I'm thinking it was around 20 minutes max. So let's talk value. Today's price is $799. And I I wouldn't be surprised if an upcoming sale drops it down to $699. You can check the current price by using my affiliate link in the description. We got 77% from the 960 watt hour battery, which is okay. Considering things like the cooling fan running during testing, and if you use the DC outlets, they are much more efficient and will give you a higher result. This thing recharged in a lightning quick one hour and 23 minutes from 0%. That's an impressive rate, especially if you need a quick charge. The display was acceptable in darker settings, but it is quickly outshined by the sun outdoors. The AC inverter performs well and sustained its 1200 watt rating for the duration of its battery capacity, giving us 34 minutes of runtime, not bad. I didn't touch on these handles, which feel substantial and fold out when not in use. There are plenty of outlets and the current price is very competitive. The Jackery Explorer 1000 is similarly specced, but with this lithium iron phosphate battery, the scales are tipped in favor of the Aburl. Next, I suggest you watch this video over here to check out some solar panels which pair perfectly with the Wokatel. <laughs> 